Good evening, this is Diane. Welcome to that first Q&A video. I have now more than 30,000 subscribers and this is amazing. So thank you for all your comments and support and your kindness. And yeah, thank you. This means a lot for me. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you. I know we are living strange times and I hope everyone is okay, you and your family and I hope you could make yourself cozy at home too during this lockdown period I tried to make to make it cozy too <laughs> I actually did not intend to make a Q&A video so early but there have been many questions these last weeks so this video will be a mix of the questions I read in the comments and questions that were asked on the community tab. So obviously most of you wanted it to be soft spoken. I've got my questions and notes. So let's start. There have been a lot of questions about my accent and I am French. I live in France on the west coast in a cute little country house and yeah, surprisingly some of you seemed to think I was German because of my accent. I did not know. <laughs> I had a German accent. Um, je suis française. Je, je ne parle pas allemand et je n'ai même jamais étudié l'allemand à mon grand regret. And I learned English at school first and after that by myself, reading books or watching movies. And some of you asked me if I had some experience in filmmaking or if I was a producer or something. No, I had no experience and I started with my channel. I've been watching a lot of videos about cinematic lighting, settings, editing and I'm learning every day and I really enjoy it but yeah, basically I just bought a camera and I started filming. And that leads me to another question about my art experience, how long I've been drawing and painting and why I did stop. Well, when I was a teenager, I really enjoyed drawing. That was more than 20 years ago now. And so after high school, I entered an art school. I wanted to be a character designer for animated movies. But after two years, I quit the school and changed my mind and decided I wanted to be a painter. After a few years, um, well, I gave up because I was struggling getting on the canva what I had in mind and I was never satisfied of what I painted. So, yeah, I just gave up. <laughs> and even if I'm still very interested in art, especially the prophylites and fairy tale illustrators from the end of the 19th, beginning of the 20th century. I don't really draw or paint anymore, but I try to get slowly back to it since some of you asked for a sketching video. So this is what I am working on right now. And then there were a few questions about what I do for a living and what my day job is. I have a part-time job. I'm a nanny, so I take care of children before or after school. And right now this is interrupted, obviously. <laughs> And before I speak about my inspirations, I just wanted to say a few words about 
my ASMR story. If you are here, I suppose you've got one as well, so I'd be curious about it. So if you want to share your ASMR story in the comments, please do so. I have always experienced it as long as I can remember. When one of my classmates was playing with his pencils or if the teacher was flipping through our papers, that was heaven for me. And for years I thought I was weird. I don't know if you can relate. And one day, it was in 2013, I guess, my sister and I were reading the same book, which was The Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb. And my sister asked me, when you read this scene, did you have some kind of tingles in your head? And I said, yes, you did too. And she told me about um, the ASMR and all the videos we could find on YouTube. That's when I discovered gentle whispering, whisper thread, laser feather, ASMR request, whispering walls, and all these whole channels. And this was a new world opening for me. Since then, I, I've been thinking sometimes if I would or not create an ASMR channel, but I thought I would have nothing new to bring to this community, so that's why it took me so long, I suppose. And now let's move to my favorite question, which is what does inspire me? Um, I'm going to mention a lot of channels, so I'll put all the names and links in the description box below if you're interested. And uh, um, yeah, some of you asked if I was inspired by Goodnight Moon or Atmosphere, especially for the role plays. Yes, of course I was. They are both amazing and I really love their styles. They both have a strong style, but in different ways. But yes, I'm a fan. <laughs> and there are, of course, others I would mention, especially Blue Whisper. This might be my favorite ASMR channel. Her videos are both very heartwarming and so tingly. <laughs> um, there is also Latte, of course. Mia Ling and Made in France ASMR. He does create cinematic videos that are awesome in a modern way, but he is a professional, so if you want to check out his work, it's amazing. And uh, there is also Tinting ASMR. While I was working on the Apothecary Roleplay, I watched all her herbal shop pharmacy or place and it was very inspiring too and yes there are a lot of ASMR channels that I love I will not mention all of them but I'll put the links in the description down below and there are also some channels some other channels that inspire me it's not ASMR channels even if we could say there is a lot of unintentional ASMR in their videos. I would mention one mainly, which is Lizzie Kiss channel. You might already know her, she's got something like 10 million subscribers. And yes, I love her videos. It's mainly outdoor scenes, but I like to get inspired by the different angles she uses. And she's got a strong aesthetic too. So I think she really was the one who made me want to create videos. And there are a few others that can be very relaxing too. I will put the links again in the description. 
and yeah somehow I think everything we love inspire us even in the tiniest way our mind will pick up some ideas from everything we enjoy watching or reading or even listening to so that's why I love to get inspired by a large range of art forms and um, there was one last question about this what were the fictional stories or environments that inspired me of course there are some novels and movies the Outlander series um, that was my main inspiration uh, for the apothecary videos Tolkien's works of course um, Jane Austen's books and paintings and poetry from the 19th century and um, legends like the Arthurian myths or classic fairy tales and that might answer the question about uh, my historical inspirations too I haven't made so many role plays so far and I think all these inspirations will help me develop my own style for the months to come and I may try some new ASMR approaches as well then there were a few questions about my future videos and plans for the channel as I said I'm currently working on a sketching video and I'm working on several role plays too the next one will take place in the 18th century and there are a few collabs as well coming um, with medieval themes and um, for now <laughs> it's enough I think I'll be quite busy for the next month and I was asked if I would make narration videos well that's the kind of video I would like to make I've been thinking about this but I don't really know when I'll start this but yes this is something I'd like to do and um, do I plan to create RPG or fantasy lore in my videos? no, I don't think so I know some ASMR artists do this very well like Goodnight Moon or ASMR with Anna and this is not something that appeals to me right now I may have returning characters um, but they won't be linked because they might be from, from different historical periods or from different atmospheres so no, I do not plan to create this kind of lore a lot of you asked where I find my props <laughs> I like that question for each of my videos I always try to use what I already have as much as possible for the middle of gift shop and the music shop I do not have to buy anything new because I already had everything at hand um, I'm a kind of minimalist but I own some things so I try to use them um, same thing for the no talking videos uh, I use things I have things I may use every day and next there are things I borrow or I find in my late grandmother's house in France as in other European countries I believe it's quite easy to find antiques that belonged to past generations so that was the case with some of the apothecary bottles I used and some other props as well I used in this role play and then there are things I buy second hand in thrift stores, antique shops or on small hats websites we've got one in France that is quite similar to Craigslist and I like to use it um, that's 
where I found most of my antique apothecary jars and pots and um, another example is a pack of old books I bought for the Warhound Library roleplay. I found a pack of three for one euro <laughs> so that's really inexpensive and these are often missiles they are quite easy to find and they have this old antique look that I absolutely love and they make great sounds too and finally what I don't have what I can find or buy second hand I buy new but this is this is something I'm very careful with we live in a world where a lot of items were already produced so when I buy new it means I ask for more I'm not trying to be moralizing here <laughs> this is just my way so every time I buy something new I try to buy handmade or locally or eco-friendly like the candles, some of the candles I used for the candle maker role play. Some of them were bought on Etsy and some were made where I live. And there are things, of course, that I buy in classic stores like um, fabrics I used for the dressmaker role play. and uh, a pack of printable antique paper that I often use and yeah, someone asked how I aged my papers as you may have seen, I like to use antique papers in my videos and for that I use two different ways, two different techniques. The first one is with these printable um, sheets I bought on Amazon. I soak them in water and then I crumple them so it gives this antique look and then I tear some of the edges or burn them with a candle. And the second technique is with regular sheets from sketch pads. I soak them in tea or coffee depending on how dark you want it to be and then yeah I crumple, tear some of the edges and burn them. <laughs> Looks like a torture. And yeah then some of you asked me how long it took to make the apothecary roleplay video. Um, it took me three weeks for this one. Um, writing the script, gathering all the props and the costume and when I start a video I, I pick up an ID, I've got a long ID's list so I pick up an ID in this list and I write a short story about it so I can decide what kind of triggers I want in it and after that I make a few sketches uh, so I can start looking for the props and costume I want for this video for the role plays at least and I do a lot of researches as well because I try to be as accurate as possible And last question, do I have a Facebook, Instagram or Patreon? No, maybe and yes, I will. Um, I don't think I will have a Facebook account. Facebook is not my cup of tea. I will create an Instagram account, I think. I still have to decide what I will put on it because there is already the community, the community tab on YouTube and I do not want to have exactly the same things on both so yes, I'm thinking about it 
and of course yes I will have Patreon thank you for asking um, I, I'm i just waiting for some administrative stuff to be done and in France it seems we have the most complicated system in the world so it's taking some time but yes I will well this is the end of this Q&A video and I hope you could find some answers and um, if you were here just for the ASMR I hope you are now ready to go to sleep so good night and sleep well <laughs>